hey guys so today i'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy fondant crown um you'll need a small simple crown that i got off amazon i'll put the list the link below and you'll also need a texture mat and some molds um just use what you have this is what i had so i used it and um yeah let's begin so first I take some fondant and I'm gonna roll it into a ribbon. And while I do that, um, this is me real time. I didn't speed up anything on this video. So I'm gonna just bore you with my talking in between. Um, so basically I came up with this idea, just being lazy, honestly. Um, I was doing a Royal Prince themed cake and just wanted to jazz up the crown. I get these crowns on Amazon all the time, but they're really simple. Um, and there aren't many Prince crowns out there. If you know of any where I can buy some at a good price, let me know in the comments below. But until then, here's a good little uh, cake life hack on how to jazz up these um, really inexpensive small crowns. I use them on my cake. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see them on various cakes. I don't do anything to them. I just purchased some. They're very inexpensive. Um, and that's why I would only do this procedure to the, to that inexpensive crown. <laughs> I wouldn't do it to an expensive crown. So if that makes sense. So I rolled out some fondant and here I am using my texture mat. You can use any texture mat. Um, and I'm just going over, going over that fondant. Now you can roll this piece a little thicker just to give it a little body. Um, but as you can see here, I rolled mine's really thin. Um, but the texture helps to hide that um, you're going to see when we go for it. But it's going to basically hide the crown because we're going to use the crown as the base. We're going to use the real crown as the base um, <laughs> for all this fondant detailing. So I added my texture mat and I actually made, I sized my crown height and circumference. And I made just a little template out of paper. Um, just as an easy guide and that's what I'm using here to get the right size and the right height so I'm just cutting it out with my little pastry cutter and there you have it so now here's the crown and I just take piping gel and I make sure that I get enough uh, piping gel along the base and then a little at the top of the the crown the tip of the crown just to make sure that the fondant sticks so this is literally just like a cheat code this is a little cheat code um, I've done this before um, like I said just to jazz it up a little bit um, and just give it a better more a nice custom look to it so once I realized that I have uh, pipe and gel everywhere, edible glues, same thing. Um, now I'm gonna roll my piece of fondant up really loosely. I did brush it with cornstarch before I started rolling it. So it's just so it doesn't stick to itself. And I take my crown and I'm trying to find, the crown has a seam. So I'm trying to find the seam on the crown. And that's when I um, adhere my piece of fondant being very gentle and you can see how thin the fondant is so the best time the, the reason why I did this is because I was short on time I had a cake due on a Sunday so I, I'm doing this it was a Friday evening um, and I'll tell you why um, Friday evening I'm doing this process and I decided to record it and then I let it dry for Saturday, dry overnight into Saturday. And then that's when I paint it and it's ready for Sunday. So this is basically, you know, helpful if you don't have much time. Because a normal crown, you need to make it like three to five days in advance. So here are my other pieces that I used. Here are my molds that I'm showing you how I made them. So I made them. And now I'm going to adhere them with piping gel. And I just freestyled this design. Kind of just um, found some molds, figured out, okay, what, what do I want to 
use i'll also be using these same molds on the actual cake so my cake and my and my crown will will match so here i'm adding this border and then i'm going to go ahead and add the other piece so back to what i was saying so if you are crunch for time say you need this crown in the same day and you're crunch for time you can go ahead and add tylos to everything to make it dry faster i did not add any tylos to this fondant this is just straight fondant this is actually wilton's white fondant that i use with no tylos added but if you need it immediately if you have less than 24 hours you have a rush cake order whatever it may be go ahead and add tylos it'll dry a little quicker that way you'll be able to paint it and um place it on your cake so there i added the first border and as you can see um now i'm going to add the other border just to just to finish off the, that edge piece I was going to leave it like that, but I was like, oh, something's missing. So I did, that's when this is where I'll add the rope border. Of course, with pipe and gel. I have to have pipe and gel. If, when I'm doing cake related to anything, pipe, if I don't have pipe and gel, I can't function. I mean, you guys can see it in all my videos. I use pipe and gel for everything, for fondant, for edible images, everything, you name it. I use uh, pipe and gel. I hear it's the same thing as um, edible glue. So same thing, but love me some pipe and gel. So here I am making sure everything is sticking. Be very gentle with it because the fondant is still pretty soft. And don't worry about that inside gold part. I'm going to show you how I cover that up. So here, this is my final piece as far as decor. So I'm going to add these all around. It's very soft, so I'm trying to find the best position for this piece. So... I decided to add it to one of the, where there was it was more stable. Yep. So I'm positioning the piece and it, it looks good already. Even if I left it like this, it still it still looked good. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and add these pieces all around. So feel free to get creative when you make your crowns. So um, back to what I was saying, uh, these crowns, you could probably get one, maybe $6.99, $8.99. Um, I do recommend that if you go ahead and you add fondant to the crown and, you know, jazz it up, you know, definitely add that to the quote of the entire cake, you know, because this goes from an $8.99 crown to maybe, you know, $50, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> But definitely make sure you charge for, you know, the time it's going to take you to create this. But like I said, it's, it's the perfect way to create a crown when you're in a rush. Look at that. Amazing. So now what I'm going to do, we can see the actual crown on the inside. So I'm going to show you how I covered that up. So now I'm going to put my crown on that. I had it sitting on some wax paper so I don't have to handle it so much with my hands and mess it up. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll out another strip of uh, fondant. And a lot of people ask me, what do I use to roll my fondant? I only use cornstarch. Only use cornstarch. That works for me. So that's what I use. Um, I find that when I use powdered sugar, it dries out my fondant a lot uh, faster. But use what works for you. Because I feel that it depends on the mat, the surface that you're working on. Because I know some people that roll out fondant with Crisco. That doesn't work for me. I think it may be the mat that I'm using. So just do what uh, works for you. And, you know, depending on what surface that you're rolling your fondant on. So I roll my strip. And I'm going to go ahead and use that template that I used earlier to create um, the same length, same height. And this time I'm not putting any texture on it because it's going on the inside. You could put a texture if you want. 
but I'm basically just doing this to hide that inner part of the crown. So nobody knows our secret, okay? Don't tell anybody about this hidden crown on the inside, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. But um, this just keeps everything looking, you know, seamless and nice. So here I am, um, I just was gonna pick it up and put it in, I was like, no, I forgot that I needed to roll it up. So I'm rolling it up, the same where I did the first strip. And now I get my crown and I get my piping gel. And I am making sure that I brush the inside bottom of the crown that base of the crown with pipe and gel because I want to make sure the fondant sticks there and then I'm brushing pipe and gel on the fondant pieces that's showing on the inside so that it sticks so I'm going to start it at the seam line it up to where I started the first where I started the outside strip so and then I just roll it on the inside roll it all the way around making sure I'm keeping everything intact and still being still trying to be gentle um, you don't have to do it in this order. I don't see why I, I could have done the outside um, strip and then did the inside all at the same time. Either way, it's fine. But I didn't think of it until after I did the outside. I was like, oh, I, you can really see the inside. I need to cover it up. So that's why it was done in this order. But you could definitely do the outside and inside strip at the same time or right after each other. So there you go. Um, and then basically I make sure everything is sticking, everything is standing up. Like I said, this had no tylos, so it's just, um, holding up on its own. So I make sure everything is glued on and there you can see the inside, let it dry for a few hours or overnight. And there you have it. So here's the crown after I let it sit overnight. I then painted it with luster dust mixed with lemon extract and here it is on the final cake.